<laughs> I'm back. I know it has been so long. The last time I posted a video, I have literally just started college and now I'm almost done with my first semester. So I apologize for the brief hiatus, but I really just needed to take the time to figure out what I'm doing here and now I'm here to give you all the tips and advice and um, so today, for today's video, I wanted to discuss um, BSMD applications. I know we're like in the thick of the college application season um, and easy deadlines have already passed. Um, but I just thought this would be a really cool video because I know um, it's a really unique opportunity to be able to like get into med school at like 17, 18 years old. So if you don't know, um, I applied to a BSMD program in my senior year of high school, which was one year ago, um, and I got accepted. So um, I thought I'd just take this opportunity to give you like some general tips for things to like keep in mind when you're like building your resume for a BSMD application and also just like some general application tips. So yeah. Okay, tip number one. Um, and this might sound generic, but I really think that it's so, so important, um, not just for BSMD programs, but obviously for any highly selective school, and that is that your test scores and your GPA matter probably, possibly, potentially more than anything else in your application. Um, it's what gets your foot in the door in terms of like even people reading your applications, um, especially when you're applying to a BSMD program in order for an admissions committee to look at a 17 or an 18 year old's application and admit them to medical school or give them guaranteed direct admission to medical school after college, um, they have to know that you're gonna be um, successful in medical school and that you have what it takes to be able to pursue that. So um, obviously everybody has different access to educational resources and test prep resources and different levels of quality of education. So. Um, there's not one score that everybody needs to have. Um, I think in general for BSMD applications, um, you want to try to have a 1530 or above on the SAT or a 34 and above on the ACT. I think if you can get higher than that, 1550 and above on the SAT and 35 or 36 on the ACT is great. That will be perfect and, you know, let those admissions committee members know that they don't have anything to worry about in terms of like academic capabilities. And then for GPA, I think as close as you can get to a 4.0 as possible is really optimal. Um, so as close as you can get to straight A's. Um, and then in terms of AP scores and other things like that, I look at those things as a way to add to your application. It can, you know, really drill into those admissions committee members' heads that you're a great student. Um, but I don't think they're necessary at all, just because everybody has different access to AP exams and AP classes at their school, um, so it can certainly help you, but I don't think it really hurts you if you don't submit those scores. So the next thing I'm going to be talking about is research. Pretty much everybody that I know personally who's been accepted to a BSMD program has done research in some way during high school. It's obviously not a requirement. Obviously everybody has different levels of access to being able to go to a research lab um, and do that. It can be really hard in high school, especially because you don't have like weekdays free because you're at school then. Um, but if you can figure out some way to do it, um, it can really significantly help boost the strength of your application. And I think that's for a few different reasons. Um, number one, most undergraduates are gonna have to do research anyway to be able to get into med school. Like it's just a part of like med school applications. It's something that like med schools look for. Um, and so if you're doing that in high school, it already puts you ahead of the game. Um, and then the second thing I think is that um, showing that you're capable of working in a real research laboratory with engaging with professors, engaging with PhD students, engaging with um, like professionals um, who are working on uncovering new scientific discoveries and engaging with the field of science in a very like involved way um, and like engaging with scholarly literature and all of these things um, that sort of I think also show your academic competence. Um, and lastly, I think just like research in general is 
um, like the way that like you can create large-scale impact in the field of medicine and so like being involved in that sort of shows that you're not just interested in being a doctor because you know you want to be able to say that you're a doctor or it's a really like respectable profession or um, anything like that but it shows that like you genuinely care about science and you genuinely care about helping people through science so I think it just helps like show your interest in the field a little bit more too. Okay, so to get into a little bit more in depth about like how to go about finding research, because I know that's something that a lot of high schoolers are very confused about, um, which makes sense because nobody tells you. Um, and I went to a high school where we had an allotted day during the week where we could do research if we wanted to, like we had buses that would transport us there, and that was obviously a situation that the vast majority of people will not have. Um, and so the people that I know who didn't go to my high school who did research usually did it through some sort of summer program. Um, also, um, the way that the most that most people I know found uh, their research mentors is just through cold emailing. And sometimes you have to email like 50 people, but I can almost guarantee you that at least one of them will respond. And if they don't respond, you can send a follow-up. Follow-ups do miracles let me tell you the number of people that i've had not respond to me the first time i sent them an email and respond immediately after when i send a follow-up is crazy and research is also a great opportunity to be able to get an additional letter of recommendation from somebody who's not a teacher and has seen your work um and you know the things that you're capable of outside of a school environment um and so that can be really significant to your application as well Okay, the last thing I'm going to talk about might be a little bit controversial, um, and I do want to say that I think you should take this with a grain of salt because every BSMD program is very different. Um, there are some that are like, we want students to love medicine, 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 be obsessed with science, it's all they can talk about, all they can think about, everything that they do. Um, and some BSMD programs want you to really have a life outside of your passion for science. Um, and they want you to emphasize that more in your application. And so I, my advice that I would give is that whenever you are trying to apply to highly selective schools or programs, like the game that you're playing is a game of setting yourself apart because there are so, so, so many people that are perfectly 100% qualified to be there. You are probably one of those people. And so the best thing that you can do for yourself is to try to make your application look different from other people's. And so that's why my advice is to try to show another side of yourself, whether that's talking about how you know, maybe you are super like creative and you love to like crochet or like knit little scarves and you, you know, started this initiative to help, um, you know, knit scarves for pediatric patients in your hospital or, um, you know, maybe you are super passionate about like reproductive health and you, you know, advocated for reducing menstrual stigma in your community or something like that. Um, and so, you know, you can talk about your other interests and passions in a way that is connected to medicine and is connected in, to the field you want to go into, but you also don't have to. You can also just talk about how you're captain of the girls' golf team and you love that and you love golf or you love to pogo stick or you love, like, puzzles. Um, I think the best thing that you can do when you're trying to apply to a highly selective school is to showcase that one thing about yourself that makes you really different from everybody else. Um, and so really like in your um, essays for your BSMD programs, um, if you have an opportunity to do so, I think it would be really helpful to show all of the other things that you're involved in that have nothing to do with medicine because at the end of the day, Everybody applying to the BSMD program is going to have an application that looks relatively similar. You know, most people are going to have research. Most people might be involved in some sort of med-related club like Med Society or HOSA. Um, you know, most people are going to have similar test scores. And so if you can try to show who you are as a person, um, I think that can be really helpful in helping you stand out. Um, because also, like, people want doctors to be people, you know, not just, like, robotic 
science loving machines but people who have emotions and hobbies and interests because also like connecting with your patients and the people that you work with is a very important part of um, medicine as well those were all the tips that i had um thank you so much for watching this video i appreciate you um and if you did have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments and i will do my best to help you out um also kind of trying to keep this on the DL, but since you stayed to the end, you deserve to hear it. Um, I'll be doing some, like, free college essay proofreading, um, so if you have, you know, those January 1st deadlines creeping up on you, um, feel free to drop your college essay in the Google form in the description, and I'll do my best to get back to you with, like, general feedback and advice, um, and I will do that for as many people as I can, um, unless I get too many, which I really don't anticipate happening. So feel free to do that if you think that'll be helpful to you. Um, and again, thank you so much for being here. And if you could please like and subscribe to this video, it would make me very, very happy. It would make me smile. Um, and yeah, I hope you have a beautiful day.